Hey, this is Josh here. Uh, one more update for you guys on that rain video. So, um, okay, flying boxes. But, uh, so this is going to be an update for Vertex Paintable Rain. Uh, if you're interested in how I created all this stuff and the, the intricate details of everything and my workflow, uh, you can go ahead and check out the tutorial uh, on my channel and the source files for all of this stuff is in the description in the tutorial and you guys are free to use that uh, to your heart's content. But uh, I've got an update package in the description of this video that contains all of the assets for uh, working around with this new Vertex Paint version. So, uh, without further ado, let's hop right on in. Let's show you guys uh, how this works. So, uh, by default, when you drop a mesh in the scene, everything is white. Uh, so it would be dry. So by default, everything is dry. Figured that would be easier for you guys. And but you can fill if you want. You can fill it up. But I'm going to I'm going to undo all that junk. So it uses the red channel. Uh, so I'm going to turn that down. It uses the red channel. So I'm only painting in red. You'll notice. So wherever I paint uh, black in the red channel. Um, it will paint rain. And it's got all the raindrops, it's got the, the watery waves inside it, and it's ready to go. And wherever you paint with white or true in the red channel, or just as red, um, it will erase and paint back to dry. So let's hop on over to the materials so you guys can see what exactly I've done. If you're interested in that, I condensed it down to a material function, the the majority of the rain stuff, and I've got the flip book inside the material function, but I exposed a lot of these inputs out so you guys have options. I didn't want to limit you guys with what you were doing, so I exposed most of these things to variables, provided it is a lot of variables to adjust, so, you know, it's a lot of things, but uh, ultimately it's a lot more open-ended this way. Uh, it relies on the red channel here, as I was saying, and it goes right on in. And you have uh, input puddle amount global drive, so you can control um, the overall value. If you wanted to, you could put this in a blueprint and control uh, how much uh, rain there actually is in total. So if you wanted to make it start raining, you could adjust this value after painting your terrain. Uh, for the rain, and then if you wanted to stop raining, you would just adjust this value back um, to dry. So that's the fun part. It lets you paint down every, all the rain you want and then turn it on and off using this. Um, so let's go into the vertex material. Once again, red channel goes right on in, and this is what I was saying. There's a lot of values in here. We're only using two textures inside the material function. Uh, that's your flipbook material, and then the the waves for the waviness and water. It's pretty subtle, but it's a nice touch. Uh, I have completely eliminated eliminated the albedo from being included inside the material uh, function. So uh, if you had like a landscape layer set up, this is where your landscape albedo layers would go. This is where your uh, landscape normal blend would plug into and this is where your landscape height blend would plug into um, and that's that's necessary because this uh, ensures that wherever there's a puddle your normals are flat so it looks like a puddle and this gives you a nice dither on the edges of your puddles so yeah uh, that's about it I hope this is helpful for you guys and hope you enjoy it um, feel free to use it in your projects as I mentioned and uh, yeah if you make something cool with it feel free to show me I'd, I'm always down for that and if you have anything else you want to see made uh, let me know and I'll see what I can do about that so whether it be blueprints UI uh, any anything I'm loving all this stuff so I'll catch you guys next time